Good morning, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat. Coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It is Wednesday. It's hump day. Trying to get through this week. I heard from the coordinators yesterday and... Sorry, what? I'm sorry. So what? Did someone say something? I kid. I kid the coordinators, but man, that's a tough road to hope. I will tell you, there are days, there are moments, there are stretches where I'm like, oh, man... I really miss being on the beat, but the baton death march of having to ask coordinators questions in the middle of the off season is not one of those times, <laughs> uh, but no, it is great to hear from Stenovich and Barry and Satya and hear their thoughts and uh, empty proclamations for the most part, but Hey, you know, we need the content, right? Got to get the content going. Um, but if you haven't and uh, heard from those guys, who didn't watch the, Pressers live. Um, congratulations. You have a life. And uh, they are available for your viewing and listening pleasure if you need a sleep aid uh, over on YouTube or Packers.com. So good morning, everybody in the comments section. Hope you're all doing well. I mean, seriously, at one point, Joe Barry is asked, what was the question? And I think it was from Ryan Wood about what, you know, these two new studs from the first round will do do to help the defense something you know somewhat generic softball whatever and joe barry proceeds to answer with like something about how it's always great to get guys who love football and you can feel that coming off of them like that's a paraphrase but it's close to the answer you can feel their love of football coming off of them this is what we're talking about here in mid may there's too much coverage there's too much nfl coverage there's that this is too much. This this relationship you and I have, Packers fans, it's too much. And I understand it's too much. And I know we're all in this together. We're all like, you know, understanding that we all have a, because a chip loose somewhere in our in our soul because like we can pa- talk Packers at any moment. You can talk anything about the Packers at any moment. But there's a rational side in my brain that knows like what are we doing? Go outside, Nagler. Touch some grass, and then I go and I turn on another game, and I keep watching. Like yesterday, I was watching the uh, the Steelers game. Oh, uh, which by the way, Luke Garns, a longtime Patreon member. What's up, buddy? He was in New York City over the weekend with his lovely wife, and Luke stopped by the studio yesterday. Good to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well. Safe travels back to California. Always good to meet uh, longtime Cheesehead TV viewers and listeners. Hello to everybody in the comments. Hope you're all doing well. Uncultured. Starting us off, what's up, buddy? The Green Bay Packers taking defense seriously? Have we gone back in time to 1955? Pappies. I mean, I, 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 you guys know, I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to get out in front of your yourself a little too much here in the offseason because these guys have yet to do anything of note. But I can only point to Corey Banke's tweet from a couple days ago when he said, it's given me best defense of my lifetime vibes. And that's a bold statement from Mr. Banky, but it's got the potential. And that's all it is right now is potential. But it's got that potential. It's very exciting. <laughs> that special teams coach was so not wanting to answer stupid questions yesterday. I mean, that's who he is. Um, that You know, that isn't just yesterday. You better bring, bring it and come correct with Basaccio because uh, he does not sugarcoat it. And I love it. I just want Barry to look into the camera and tell us that we will dominate. I mean, that's one of those things. You love it as a fan, right? But if you don't dominate, then that is going to get kind of manipulated and picked up and twisted a million different ways on the Internet. And why give 31 other teams bulletin board material? But yes. So you're going to once a week, Rick? Of course not. Of course not. I will probably be changing the time, though. Um, Packers daily will most likely not for sure yet, but most likely be later in the day. Um, but not until, um, probably after mini camp. And then once we have a reset from Packers trivia and then get ready for training camp, that's, uh, when things will probably change. So Dustin, what's up, man? Long snapper sign. And that means Super Bowl bound. Oh, what a story for this kid from Georgia Tech, right? Didn't even play long snapper last year, but was uh, part of the tryout group um, during rookie minicamp. But he has experience as a snapper uh, in Georgia Tech. But last year, he was a backup tight end. Uh, but yeah, we got some competition for Wordle. 
a homeboy who was pushed into Bohorquez in the playoff game. So, I mean, if that's your lasting memory that as a player, you better work your ass off in this battle to erase it because, wow, that, that left a mark. No doubt about it. Uh, Sleep Enjoyer, what's up? Nags! I went on an amazing date last night, made fun of Brady, and gushed about the pack. Love you and Cheesehead TV and all your work. Well, that's a that's a bold strategy. Hoping she's not a Patriots or Bucks fan, uh, or he, whoever you were on the date with. Um, but that's that's great, man. What are those like dates? I've forgotten. It's <laughs> good though. I'm glad you glad you're having a good time out there. Uh, Brandy, give Slayton the try at long snapper. How? TJ Slayton's kind of the forgotten guy, right? Like, I know we're all excited about the new toys and they assigned Jerron Reed and the defense is being talked about because of the linebackers being able to stay on the field. And we just signed Jair to this extension. And, oh, my gosh, the secondary is going to be lights out. TJ Slayton's like the sleeping giant, and I mean giant, who is just going to come in and just you know, probably keep developing and probably, you know, take a significant step forward. And it feels like come October, we're going to be like, this kid, you talk about domination. This kid is dominating. That's just guesswork on my part, but that's what it feels like. Uncultured, what's up, man? This morning's jams are a double shot. Gear jammer and reeling and rocking from George Thorogood. Hope everyone has a good day. Pappies. Man, I got to come. You know what I got to start doing? I got to put together a Spotify playlist of all of Uncultured's jams because they're always so good. Cyril, what's up, man? New kids in the hall. Fabulous. Yeah, I saw uh, there's going to be new kids. Is it out? I saw a couple months ago the headline that they were they were reforming and doing new stuff. Um, dude, and where are you on why aren't you on happy hour anymore? You're never on anymore. Come on, man. Join us. Happy hour is tomorrow night this week, by the way. Patreon members, you'll see on the Patreon page. Zoom info is up. It's Thursday night this week. I got an engagement. I got something I gotta do tonight. So uh tomorrow night, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern, people, be there or be squared. Daddy Cool Breeze. What's going on, man? Smash that like button for Nags. G-Fence. Ooh, G-Fence. Look at you. I like it. I got to pass that along to the guys at the, the Packers fence. That's pretty G-Fence. I like it. Big Daddy Cool Breeze coming in hot. Um, I may not know a lot, but I know my jams. Yeah, you do, Uncultured. That ain't no joke. The coolest name on the internet. Hey, Big Daddy Cool Breeze is no joke. No question about it. The man's got style. Uh, Butch, will Packer rookies to make the 53 be over under six? Wow. Out of 11 draft picks, I'll take the over, but just, let's say seven. Will Aaron Rodgers star in a movie like Brett Favre, or will he not reach that level of greatness? Something about Mary. <laughs> Complicated fella. What the hell is Brett Favre doing here? Um, I mean, Aaron's done stuff. Maybe not, you know, feature film level but you know he's been in game of thrones i mean you couldn't find him but he was in it um and he's the host of jeopardy i mean that's pretty significant but yeah something about mary is legendary let's just keep brett there right in our memories in the 90s and just kind of ignore everything from like the moment he joined the vikings on after that it's it's i don't know who you're talking about uh, with offensive coordinator Adam Stenovich, will the usual Matt LaFleur offense be in play? Or will the Packers see more bubble screens, wheel routes, or various personnel packages? Two tight ends, two running backs, etc. Dennis, that is an excellent question. What kind of effect will Stenovich have as far as the, the mix, the soup, if you will, that is the Packers offense? Um, I want to see more pony. I want to see more two-back formations. I want to see more... Uh, AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones in the backfield together. We've seen a sprinkling of it through Matt's first three years. But I want to see a lot of it. I want it to become a staple part of the offense. Um, now I know Steno, he did touch on that a little bit yesterday, but um, I don't, I think the kind of outside the building, we look at it and we think, oh, Stenovich, that means they're going to emphasize the run more. And I don't think that's strictly true, but I do hope there is a bit more a liberal mix of more blocking schemes up front and they you know, stuff that they showed early in the year last year and then kind of got away from as the year went on, but more angle blocking, more power stuff. I do think like the types of concepts and things of that nature, 
could change up under Steno, but I think ultimately it comes down to Matt and Aaron, and I think that's always going to be a pass-first offense with Rodgers in town, even though I think they would benefit from running the ball more and doing a little bit more of the you know, stuff out of the Shanahan tree. But um, we'll see how it progresses. I am excited to see what kind of wrinkles they incorporate with new brain trust, so to speak, in, in those meetings. And don't forget Tom Clements is probably going to be part of that as well. So there's a lot going on there. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Will they beat the Cowboys? Julie, will they? Please. Of course they'll beat the Cowboys. In Lambeau, Mike McCarthy's return. They are, they cannot be allowed to win that game. Now watch them lose by 20. Uh, he was in the office. There you go. Aaron Rodgers was in the office. That's still not something about Mary Level, though. Sorry, especially U.S. office. Now, if you've been in the U.K. office, that would have been impressive. Uh, Cowboys going down. You darn right. Uh, what else we got here, folks? What are the expectations for Aaron's presence at OTAs? We'd like to see him starting to mesh with new targets, which he hasn't had to do like this really ever. Andy, yeah, I think that will be a constant narrative throughout the offseason. I think a lot of that is going to get over overblown. Um, yes. Does it make us as fans feel better if Aaron Rodgers is on the practice field during OTAs throwing to Christian Watson and company? Yes, of course, it would make us feel better. But it doesn't really translate to that that much kind of reality as far as their connection on the football field come September. The majority of that work will be done in training camp. And what little kind of benefit they would get out of you know throwing routes on air in May is pretty minimal. Um, I have zero doubt that this will be blown up throughout the offseason and throughout even probably the first part of the season, but it really doesn't mean that much. And I know it's a, those content to be made, so people are going to talk about it, and I understand it. But And you guys know I, I am not shy about criticizing Aaron Rodgers, but if he didn't attend a single thing outside of the mandatory minicamp, which is a possibility – I, I just don't think it means a hill of beans. Um, you know, the adjustments, the things they need to do, the getting a quote, getting on the same page, all of that can be accomplished in training camp. You know, and I know we're going to see stuff like other quarterbacks gathering guys and throwing. And I, it just goes back to, you know, what Aaron said after they beat the Saints week one in 2011 after the lockout. If only we'd had offseason workouts, we could have put up 50. You know, it's just the end of the day, it's football, and he's played a boatload of it. And those young guys will come along. And there are tons of other opportunities in the passing game outside of just the new wide receivers, the rookies. Uh, I can't wait to see McCarthy turn purple on the Lambeau sidelines again. <laughs> there you go. But Jay Pompo, you got it. Practice? We talking about practice? Not a game. Practice, man. Practice. You got that right. Uh, will Crosby get back to being Mr. Reliable? Excellent question, Sly. And part of that is the quote-unquote operation, which now we have a long snapper battle. Uh, we will see. I will, you know, keep bringing it up. They have kept J.J. Molson on the practice squad for almost two years now. So we got to think this is his time. This is his moment to actually compete. Um, and now they also signed a kicker that Basachi is familiar with. So, you know, the longer these guys are on the roster, the more it's pretty clear that it's going to be a kicking competition. And once that happens, it's you know not really something that's going to be settled in the offseason, but probably during training camp. You know, Crosby has got to show that he can be that guy again. And I suspect, you know, to answer your question, I suspect he will. Um, with a little bit more reliability at Holder, which is one of the reasons O'Donnell was brought in, um, I do think he gets back into form. Even the even then though, it's like you are sacrificing at, at the, the moment of you know you turn around and you look at kickoffs. Part of trying to improve on special teams is the entirety of the equation, which includes the kicker who cannot consistently get it into the end zone anymore. Now he does it fine in the summer and even the first part of the season, but you know that weather turns, those kicks get shorter and shorter, and the opportunities for returns are more and more. That ain't great. You are a team that plays in Lambeau Field. You're not changing the weather. 
there ain't no dome. Crosby's got to get more consistent on the kickoffs more than anything else. I would think to justify keeping him around, especially at his salary. But what do I know? I'm just a schmo with a YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> how did Roger's trip to Switzerland go? Did he learn about managing time? Brandy with the dig. I love it. Yeah, I know. I saw that he was going to with, with the partnership with the watch company, right? Um, I don't know. I haven't seen anything around it. Um, I'm sure he'll come up with some kind of, you know, social media video probably at some point. Um, but yes, it'd be nice. Maybe they talked about not taking the play clock down to one second and burning timeouts. I don't know. Possibly. Lazard not signing could be a problem. Josh, I'm not going to let Lazard not signing his tender become an issue until it's an issue. And right now, it ain't an issue. But when it becomes an issue, we will talk about it. But right now, it's not an issue. Got to beat the Bucks too. My brother lives in St. Pete's. Go, Pat, go. Julie, I hear you. I tell you what, though, you know, you, you get that initial release of the schedule, you look at it, and you circle the games that you think are going to be tough and or probably, you know, somewhat probable L's. Uh, week three game is one of them. That and the trip to Buffalo. Those are the two real big hiccups for the Packers this year, in my mind. Uh, outside of that, they'll probably win every other one, every other game. But uh, those two, those are going to be tough. No doubt about it. What do you think of the late home season games in Lambeau? Is that the NFL looking for snow games at the end of the year? Oh, complicated. A hundred percent. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they love late season Lambeau games. They love, and by they, I mean the NFL and their broadcast partners. And it's not so much there. I mean, yes, they will a billion percent take a snow game. Right. Uh, but just the whole vibe of Lambeau in the winter is gold. You know, it's it just looks great on television. It, it sounds great. The vibe is so great. The crowd is wonderful, blah, blah, blah. Um, they always do numbers, you know, and, you know, is the idea like, can we get at least one snow globe game that they're praying for it? No question about it. Um, they, you know, that's that's football, baby. And, you know, there's Aaron Rodgers as well. Huge megastar. You put him at home late in the season. Yeah. Ratings gold. You just love it. Uh, Christmas in Miami. Seth, they're going to win that game. Come on now. Come on, Seth. They're going to win that game. Uh, 2019 Packers versus Panthers was an amazing snow game. I was, yeah, I was in the press box for that one. Um, remember that that game ended like three times, except the Packers kept committing penalties. Uh, Preston Smith had a bad one right there at the end, but they still stopped CM3 at the goal line. But that was a good one. That's probably one that most people don't instantly think about when they think about the snow games in Lambeau, but that was a good one. It got progressively heavier, too, as the game went on. That was great. Next, how many non-Packers shirts do you own? <laughs> should I start wearing non-Packers gear during the offseason? I probably should, right? Um, I, I own plenty. I, I wore a Nine Inch Nails shirt just yesterday. That's it. I own like Packers and then like old bands. That's it. That's that's my wardrobe. Uh, Steven, I remember a lot of talk during some of the down McCarthy years were how the receivers couldn't get open. With Prime 17, we didn't have that problem anymore. I hope we didn't take it for granted. I mean, look, it, I just this is a narrative that will undoubtedly pop up every single time that Rodgers struggles to find people, right? Or they maybe stub their toe in the passing game, which can happen for any number of reasons. But um, I would just point to, and this is something I wanted to impart to, uh, is it David Carr on NFL Network? David's asking, where is the matchup for the Packers without 17? I would only point to the seven games that Matt LaFleur has won with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback while Devontae Adams was out. There are plenty of opportunities in this passing game and in this scheme to open up and get things going with your tight ends, your running backs out of the backfield, guys like Alan Lazard, who we've seen come to the fore that week three game against the Saints a couple years ago. There are going to be plenty of opportunities. And this idea that they're going to just fall off the map on offense is downright laughable. So, yes, please watch the tape of those games if you need to see, quote, where the matchup is for Green Bay. 
it's all over the place. It's like the matrix. It just materializes. That's how good Lafleur is, and that's how good Aaron Rodgers is, and that's how good they are together. Take that to the bank. Uh, hey, Nags, what is this Thursday night games being streamed by Amazon? Are they trying to stream all the games? Well, not yet. Um, you got to think there'll be some kind of would eventually think there'll be some kind of hybrid version of every single broadcast. Eventually, I'm talking like 20, 30 years down the road. But right now, Amazon paid a bunch of money uh, for the rights to stream those Thursday night games. So they're going to get some good matchups. And if you read Peter King's column on Monday morning, uh, initially that Packers home game on Amazon was supposed to be against the Jets. And Amazon was like, can we get a bit more of a premium matchup here? Um, so the schedule makers changed it to the Titans game. So we have last year's number one seeds from both conferences playing on Thursday night in Lambeau Field. And one of the other things that Peter wrote, which I loved, was uh, Amazon wanted to feature Lambeau and the pageantry of tailgating at Lambeau Field, which I think is hilarious. I think he spelled debauchery wrong. Um, pageantry is not a word that leaps to mind when I think of lot one. Maybe over on the title town side the more corporate side but you get over to title town or go to stadium view pageantry is not a word that's leaping to mind <laughs> but i love it i love it i love it anything that gets uh lambo in the spotlight on culture what's up who is a bigger clown car or orlovsky why listen to former qbs who sucked in the nfl pappies no 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 no, no. i'm gonna push back hard on this both car and orlovsky do phenomenal stuff um i think orlovsky's a bit better in every aspect on television but um just because they quote unquote didn't weren't great in the nfl right they're not all-star quarterbacks that doesn't mean they don't have tons of knowledge about the game of football which they do um now you may like them as a personality you may push up or bristle at some of the stuff they say especially about the packers but don't dismiss them like that man you know how hard it is to get to the nfl let alone be a starter in it play you know for years in the league I'm sorry. I, I understand that people see them as media personalities and they're dismissive and I get all that. And that's your right. And you can do that. But man, I have way too much respect for the guys who make it to the NFL, let alone play in the NFL for a number of years. You know, I listen and now I may not agree with everything they say, you know, the car quip is a perfect example, you know, but I'm not, I see people out here and I tell Tyler on our social, you know, calling him a clown or whatever. It's like, nah, man. He, he's a guy who played at, at the highest level imaginable. Um, you know, and look, is it the Bible what they say? Of course not. Uh, there are plenty of guys who get on television who are just bad communicators. Look at Drew Brees. Drew Brees, what lasted a year in his role with NBC? They were so excited to get him. And then they just, he was not great. He wasn't great on TV. And some guys are better at it than others. I think Orlovsky's really good, actually. But. I just, yeah, I have a hard time being so dismissive about those guys. Marshall, what's up, man? If we sign trade for a veteran, which position do you think most likely we target? Wide receiver, safety, or tight end? <sighs> None of, I just don't see them doing it. But if I had to, if I had to pick one, I guess wide receiver. But I just, I think their roster is pretty set. Now, maybe, maybe they make a move at wide out eventually. But, um, I don't think it's a done, you know, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Carl, what's up, man? Just an appreciation chat. Thanks, Nags. Thank you, Carl. It's really nice of you. Thank you so much. Remember to hit the like, subscribe to this video. Andrew knows the drill. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to have to jump. I can't thank you guys enough for hanging out, talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please do me a monster favor. As the man says, hit like, subscribe to the, just subscribe. How hard is it? Does I got thousands and thousands and thousands of people watching every day who are not hitting subscribe. Hit subscribe, folks. Do it. And then tell your friends and tell your family. Cheesehead TV. We're devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. <laughs>